Trump made 81 false claims in the week running from December 16 to December 22. He made almost half of them, 40, at his December 18 rally in Battle Creek, Michigan on the night he was impeached, a wild affair in which he spoke for two hours and one minute, nearly 20 minutes longer than his previous longest rally speech. Trump's dishonesty at the rally ran the gamut of subjects, from impeachment to the size of his crowds to how far Battle Creek residents need to drive to dispose of their fluorescent light bulbs. Trump's previous record for false claims in a rally speech was 36 in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania in 2018. His record for any kind of speech, 60 false claims, came in his longest address of any kind, an epic of two hours and two minutes at the Conservative Political Action Conference in March. Trump's total of 81 false claims the week of the rally was tied for the fifth highest weekly total of the 25 weeks we have tracked at CNN since July 8. Trump made just nine false claims in the week from December 23rd through December 29th, the lowest of any week we have counted. Trump has been in Florida since December 20th, and he has made few public remarks and had little on his public schedule since a 15 false claim speech to conservative student group Turning Point USA on December 21st. Trump made 1,540 false claims between July 8th and December 29th, about nine per day. The most egregious false claim, dishwasher dishonesty okay, it sounds kind of comedic when the President of the United States complains extremely inaccurately about dishwashers. But as we explained when we called this the most notable Trump lie of December, it's also serious stuff. Trump is using his false claim that modern dishwashers require more water and electricity than older dishwashers to try to sell an effort to weaken efficiency standards. There is this impossibility, he is very confused rather than intentionally deceitful. But that would still be bad. The most revealing false claim, military planes Trump makes false claims not only when trying to deceive low-information voters but when talking to people who are experts in the subject he is being inaccurate about. During a Christmas Eve teleconference with members of the military, Trump told them that three years ago, before he was president, they had to use old planes, but that, now you have all brand new, members of the military are well aware of how wrong this is. As of late 2017, the average age of an Air Force plane was 28.3 years. Trump's administration has continued to order new planes since then, but all brand new, remains false. The most absurd false claim, the war on Christmas having promised in 2015 and 2016 that every store would use the phrase, Merry Christmas, again when he became president rather than, Happy Holidays, since, according to him, you don't ever see the word, Christmas anymore, Trump, naturally, claimed this December that all department stores are now saying, Merry Christmas, again. That is false just as it was false when he said they had all stopped referring to Christmas in the first place. Here is the full list of 90 false claims from December 14th through December 27th, starting with the ones we haven't previously included in one of these roundups. Democrats and Steel Trump said of Democrats, they want to close up your steel mills. They don't want your steel mills, December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, there may be some Democrats somewhere who want to shut down American steel mills, but this is not true of the party generally or of its leading presidential candidates. Former Vice President Joe Biden, the leader in national polls of the Democratic presidential primary, says the federal government should use tariffs on low-cost, dumped, foreign steel in an effort to protect domestic steel producers. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders is promising to create union, family wage jobs in steel manufacturing. Massachusetts Sen. Elizabeth Warren has criticized the Trump administration for how it has granted exemptions to Trump's own steel tariffs, complaining that the administration's acts have undermined American steel producers. South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg is calling for net zero emissions from industry, including steel and concrete, manufacturing, and agriculture sectors, by 2050, so environmental improvements in steel production, not the end of steel production. 
Trump's unsubstantiated claims Trump mocked journalists for calling it unsubstantiated when he says Joe Biden had told Ukrainian officials he would refuse to give $1 billion of taxpayer money to Ukraine unless they get the prosecutor to stop looking at your son in your son's company, Trump said, he's on tape. He's, if that were me, it's the electric chair. They would bring the electric chair back. No, the guy's on tape and they always say it's unsubstantiated. December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, Trump's claims are unsubstantiated, at best. There is no evidence Biden ever tried to get a Ukrainian prosecutor to stop investigating Burisma, the Ukrainian natural gas company where his son, Hunter Biden, had sat on the board of directors. Rather, Joe Biden, carrying out the policy of the U.S. government and its European allies, threatened to deny a $1 billion loan guarantee to Ukraine. Unless it fired a prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, who was widely seen as corrupt or ineffective, there is no sign Biden tried to thwart the Burisma case. Also, there is no evidence Hunter Biden was ever himself under investigation. And it is not even clear that Shokin was carrying out the investigation into Burisma or its owner, Mikola Zolochevsky. At the time Joe Biden applied the pressure, Shokin's former deputy, Vitaly Kasko, has said that the investigation was dormant at the time, there was no pressure from anyone from the U.S. to close cases against Zolochevsky. It was shelved by Ukrainian prosecutors in 2014 and through 2015. Joe Biden is on tape at a 2018 event telling the story of how he pushed for Shokin's firing, not on tape, admitting he tried to stop any investigation or to help his son. Biden's crowds, so Biden has this rally, like you know, they got 200 seats, but only a small number of people. So you know what they do. They set up a round table. So think of these people. They come in, they think they're gonna listen to this speech, they end up sitting at a round table, discussing. They must have been happy, right? December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, we could not find any cases in which Biden was supposed to make a campaign speech but drew so few attendees that his campaign roped the people who did come into having a round table discussion with him instead. The Biden campaign told us this did not happen, the Trump campaign did not respond to a request to identify the event Trump was talking about. Democrats and refugees, every Democrat running for president wants to open the floodgates to unlimited refugees from all around the world, overwhelming your communities and putting our national security at grave risk. December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, Democratic presidential candidates do want to allow in a greater number of refugees than Trump has. Trump has set a cap of 18,000 refugees for the current fiscal year, a historic low, but it is not true that all of the candidates are proposing to allow unlimited refugees. For example, Biden calls for restoring refugee admissions in line with our historic practice under both Democratic and Republican administrations. His website says he will set the annual global refugee admissions cap to 125,000 and seek to raise it over time commensurate with our responsibility, our values, and the unprecedented global need. Warren wrote in July, I'll welcome 125,000 refugees in my first year and ramping up to at least 175,000 refugees per year by the end of my first term, Vermont Sen. Bernie Sanders' plan says he would lift President Trump's refugee caps and does not include a specific desired number of refugees. Sanders' campaign did not respond to a request for comment, say it is possible to argue that Sanders is calling for unlimited refugees. But that is not true of the entire field. Michelle Obama, Bill Clinton and Michigan Trump said that, on the last day of the 2016 election, Hillary, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, and Bill Clinton, they did an emergency trip. They did an emergency trip to Michigan at 6 o'clock, December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, Michelle Obama and Bill Clinton did not go to Michigan for Hillary Clinton's rally in the state on the last day of the campaign, nor for President Barack Obama's rally in the state that day. Both Bill Clinton, who campaigned in North Carolina that day, and Michelle Obama joined Hillary Clinton, along with Barack Obama, at a nighttime rally in Philadelphia. 
Hillary Clinton's final crowd in Michigan Trump said that, at Hillary Clinton's emergency rally in Michigan the day before the election, she had 500 people, December 18th campaign rally and battle. Creek, Michigan Facts First, Clinton had a capacity crowd of more than 4,000 people for her rally at Grand Valley State University, according to local media reports at the time. Grand Rapids Wood TV8 reported, in addition to the about 4,600 inside the field house for Clinton's speech, there was an overflow crowd of several hundred more outside. People lined up hours beforehand to attend Clinton's 4 p.m. rally. This was not a one-time slip, Trump has repeatedly put Clinton's crowd at 500, an unfair trial, Pelosi gives us the most unfair trial in the history of the U.S. Congress, December 23rd Tweet Facts First, the House did not hold a trial, at all. Under the Constitution, it is the Senate that has the sole power to try impeachments. This is not merely a matter of semantics. During the House impeachment process, Republicans complained that Trump was being denied constitutional rights afforded to criminal defendants, wrongly suggesting to the public that the House process was tantamount to trial. The Constitution and impeachment were still, I have been deprived of basic constitutional due process from the beginning of this impeachment scam right up until the present. I have been denied the most fundamental rights afforded by the Constitution, including the right to present evidence, to have my own counsel present, to confront accusers, and to call and cross-examine witnesses, December 17th anti-impeachment. Letter to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi Facts First, the constitutional rights of criminal defendants do not apply to public officials in a House of Representatives impeachment process though Trump is free to argue that they should. Trump's counsel was denied the opportunity to participate in House Intelligence Committee impeachment hearings but was invited to participate in House Judiciary Committee hearings, Trump's counsel declined that opportunity. House Republicans were allowed to have their lawyer question witnesses at the House Intelligence Committee. Trump's crowds the crowd in Battle Creek Trump referred to people standing in the crowd, then added, and I'm sorry we couldn't get you seats, we didn't have any room. And by the way, 20,000 people outside had to leave. You know it's so cold outside we tell them, don't worry about a screen. Go home, go home and watch, December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan Facts First, we do not know the exact number of Trump supporters who were stuck outside because they were unable to get into his rally in Battle Creek, Michigan, but it was nowhere close to 20,000, Trump has long exaggerated the number of people stuck outside his events, Battle Creek City spokesperson Jessica Vanderkolk said in an email that the city's best guess was that there were about 1,000 people who were not allowed inside once the arena reached capacity, Eric Green, a former journalist and managing editor of the Battle Creek Inquirer newspaper, who now works in public relations, wrote on Twitter, Trump just said there were 20,000 people who had to leave because they couldn't fit in the arena. This is blatantly false. I know because I was outside the arena at the moment they closed the doors at approximately 5.45 p.m. At that time, a few hundred people quietly walked away. The Battle Creek Arena had a capacity of about 5,500 for the Trump event, according to the city and local media. Brooks Hepp, a current Inquirer reporter, said in an email that he did not see the size of the overflow crowd at its peak, but he said the overflow area could not hold anywhere near 20,000 people, so that number is likely inaccurate. He said he would offer a rough guess of probably 2,000 to 3,000 people at its peak and 1,000 by the time Trump started his speech, people leaving Trump rallies Trump said nobody ever leaves his rally speeches, I know they're coming back, nobody ever leaves our speeches. Because is there a better place to be in the world than a Trump rally? Never. Nobody, December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, this is simply not true. People have been seen leaving multiple Trump rally speeches before he has finished speaking, including this very speech. 
The New York Times reported that, as the speech went on, supporters began leaving in significant numbers or in some cases, appeared to doze off in their seats. Michigan television station WKZO reported, some supporters started to leave early as the rally ran past 9.45 p.m. Trump's venues, I've had crowds over the last couple of weeks, we went to different, Pennsylvania, Florida, but, I mean, thousands and thousands of people can't get into these, you know, NBA arenas, right, big arenas. And we set records at every one, because we use the floor, but we use the floor, right, the basketball court. So we set records at every arena. They never even mentioned the crowds. They never mention the crowds, it's sort of amazing. December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan Facts First, Trump does sometimes hold rallies at NBA arenas, or at least NBA-sized arenas, but many of his venues are much smaller than that. Even when he has spoken in actual NBA arenas, it is not true that he has set a record every time. And it's not true that the media never mentions his crowds. To the contrary, his crowds are a regular subject of media attention. Or he spoke at this Battle Creek, Michigan venue with an approximate capacity of 5,500 people. He spoke at a Hershey, Pennsylvania venue with an approximate capacity of 10,500. Neither of them was an NBA venue. His venue before that was an NBA-sized venue in Sunrise, Florida, the home of the Florida Panthers NHL team, with an approximate capacity of 20,000. Trump does not set an attendance record each time he holds a rally in an NBA arena. The last actual NBA arena he spoke in was the American Airlines Center in Dallas. Izan Evans, a spokesman for the Dallas Fire Rescue Department, told CNN that the fire department and the arena calculated an attendance of 18,500. Dallas Mavericks, who play in the arena, had an average announced attendance of 20,013 per game last season, among the highest in the NBA, according to ESPN data. It is obviously false that the media never even mentions Trump's crowds. The response of the crowd to his rhetoric is a regular part of media coverage of his rallies. Media outlets regularly mention when a rally venue was filled to capacity, their stories regularly include quotes from people in the crowd. Trade with Europe Speaking of Europe, supposedly taking advantage of the US on trade, Trump said, they don't take your product. They don't take your cars. They don't take your farm product. They don't take your medical machines. We do a big business, they sell us, we don't sell them, because they put restrictions. We have better equipment than them, but they make it so that our equipment doesn't qualify. You know, it's called artificial barriers or non-monetary barriers. It's brutal. December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, while the European Union does have non-tariff barriers that make it costly or difficult for U.S. businesses to export products there, you can read here, for example, about some of the requirements the EU imposes on pork products. It is a major exaggeration to say EU countries simply don't take U.S. farm products, cars or medical devices. As for farm products, the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative says on its website, U.S. Domestic exports of agricultural products to the EU totaled $13.5 billion in 2018. The EU countries together would rank third as an ag export market for the United States. The same website says the U.S. exported $27.7 billion worth of optical and medical instruments to the EU in 2018, according to a European Automobile Manufacturers Association report earlier this year. Today, the U.S. is the fourth biggest exporter of cars to the European Union. 19% of the total value of U.S. car exports heads for the EU, representing 12% of EU car imports by value. The EU's Eurostat statistical office says that car imports from the U.S. grew from 4 billion euros in 2002 to a peak of 7 billion euros in 2016, then fell to 6 billion euros in 2018. Henry Ford and the Assembly Line This is the state where Henry Ford invented the Assembly Line. December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan Facts First It is a popular belief that Ford invented the Assembly Line, but it is not correct. 
while Ford was the first to use a moving assembly line for the production of an automobile, Ransom Eli Olds was the first to use an auto assembly line of any kind, he used one to build his Oldsmobile curved dash cars at the beginning of the 1900s. Olds production also happened in Michigan, Olds pioneering version of the assembly line was not a moving conveyor, as Henry Ford would install a decade later, but a parade of partially completed cars swiveling from one workstation to another on dollies, the National Museum of American History explains. An accurate quotes from television Abe and Dominic quote, this is political malpractice. This is a horrible judgment call on the part of the speaker. You put your members in Trump-friendly districts in a very difficult spot. It's only going to extend it out further. This looks like the joke that it actually is Ben Dominic December 19th Tweet Facts First, Trump omitted a significant part of this quote, in which Dominic said on Fox News that he was referring specifically to Democrats in Trump-friendly districts who voted for the impeachment. Trump's omission erased the fact that members in Trump-friendly districts voted against him. We give Trump significant latitude to make errors when quoting people on television, but we call it a false claim when he alters the meaning of the quote with major changes or omissions. An Andy McCarthy quote, in the end here, nothing happened. We'd approach anything like the egregious conduct that should be necessary before a president should be removed from office. I believe that a president can't be removed from office if there is no reasonable possibility that the Senate won't convict and remove the president, then the House should not be impeaching the president in the first place. If this is the new standard, every president from here on out is impeachable, Andy McCarthy at Fox News so well stated. Thank you, December 18th Tweet Facts First, Trump omitted a significant part of this quote on Fox News, too. In between the second-to-last sentence in Trump's rendition of the quote, the House should not be impeaching the president in the first place, and the last sentence in Trump's rendition, if this is the new standard, every president from here on out is impeachable, McCarthy said, to go back to Brett Baer's point earlier about the historic nature of today, yes, President Trump will in the history books from after today, from here on out be remembered as one of the few presidents in history who are impeached. But I think history also has to be looked at in terms of what does this mean for the history of the United States. I don't think the president for long is going to be one of the handful of presidents who is impeached because, in other words, Trump omitted the fact that a friendly pundit said he would go down in history for being impeached. A Ken Starr quote, the evidence has to be overwhelming, and it is not. It's not even close, Ken Starr, former independent counsel, December 18th Tweet Facts First, Trump exaggerated Starr's comments. While Starr said on Fox News that it is, just not the case, that the evidence against Trump is, overwhelming, Starr did not say, it's not even close, here's what Starr actually said, the evidence, whether it's circumstantial or direct, and, I think it's virtually entirely circumstantial, has to be overwhelming, not just beyond a reasonable doubt, overwhelming to the American people who aren't sitting in a courtroom and listening to every witness testify and drawing inferences and so forth. When you read the Abuse of Power article in the Nixon impeachment, a fair-minded person looks at that, reads it, hears it and says, he had got to go. That's just not the case here, a Doug Collins quote, they just wanted to get at the president. They had no intention of having a proper investigation. They couldn't find any crimes so they did a vague abuse of power and abuse of Congress, which every administration from the beginning has done, at Rep. Doug Collins at Fox and Friends, December. 18 Tweet Facts First, as the Washington Post and New York Times both noted, Trump misquoted Collins, adding in significant words that Collins did not utter. Collins didn't say that, every administration from the beginning, had committed, abuse of power and abuse of Congress. He said, so they said, at the end of the day, we can't form any crimes. We are going to do a vague abuse of power. And while we're at it, let's just throw in abuse of, obstruction of Congress, because we didn't get our way, environment, energy and regulation dishwashers Trump compared modern dishwashers unfavorably to older dishwashers, saying he was proposing to change federal regulations.
He said that, in the past, you press it, boom, and the dishwasher cycle would run and be finished in 5 minutes, now, you press it 12 times. Women tell me, he added, by the way, by the time they press it 10 times, you spend more on water and electric. The whole thing is worse because you're spending all that money on electric December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first Trump's claims were comprehensively inaccurate. Energy efficient modern dishwashers do not require people to press buttons 10 times or 12 times to start them. More importantly, those modern dishwashers use less water and electricity than older dishwashers, not more. The federal government's website for the Energy Star Energy Efficiency Program notes that Energy Star certified dishwashers cut people's electricity bills and save water, a new Energy Star certified dishwasher will save. On average 3,870 gallons of water over its lifetime, Consumer Reports wrote in October, today's dishwashers use about half the water and energy that dishwashers used 20 years ago. Thanks to tougher federal efficiency standards, water usage is down to about 4 to 6 gallons per load, and less water means less energy required to heat the water. It is possible that Trump was confused. Some conservative and industry groups have made a push to get the government to roll back efficiency standards for dishwashers. They argue that modern dishwashers take too long to finish. Trump might have thought that the longer run times mean more water and electricity use, but that is not true. The disposal of fluorescent light bulbs in Battle Creek, Michigan, when a light bulb is out, you've got to bring it to a dump. So let's say over here in Battle Creek, where's your nearest dump? Trump appears to hear a response from a member of the crowd. Okay, that's what, a couple of hundred miles away. So every time you lose, drive a couple of hundred miles? December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first. It is not true that people in Battle Creek, Michigan need to drive a couple of hundred miles to dispose of fluorescent light bulbs. A spokesperson for the city of Battle Creek, Jessica Vanderkolk, said there are two collection events per year in Battle Creek itself where people can turn in such bulbs, plus two more collection events per year in the county seat about 11 miles away. In addition, major store chains, such as Home Depot and Lowe's, allow people to drop off fluorescent bulbs there for free recycling. We confirmed with the Home Depot and Lowe's stores in the Battle Creek area that people can do so at those locations, an environmental fine to San Francisco or Los Angeles alleging environmental violations related to San Francisco's population of homeless people and people who inject drugs, Trump said, and we find San Francisco and Los Angeles and San Francisco. But we've just sent them a tremendous dollar fine for what they're doing. December 18th campaign rally in Battle Creek, Michigan facts first, there is no evidence that either San Francisco or Los Angeles has been fined. Trump's Environmental Protection Agency sent San Francisco with notice of violation in October, but that notice merely mentioned the potential for fines in the future. Will Reisman, spokesperson for the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, the entity to which the EPA notice was sent, told CNN, We have not received any fines from the EPA. The office of Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti said Los Angeles had not been fined either. The EPA would not respond directly when asked if Trump's claim was correct. A spokesman told CNN to ask the White House, saying in an email, EPA has issued a notice of violation to San Francisco for failing to protect water quality. For details on the president's remarks, please reach out to the WH. EPA does not discuss ongoing enforcement action.